I think I can speak for us all when I say the pandemic has been a stressful event for everybody. But now that the restrictions have been relaxed, it was finally time to get out angling with our good friends from across Europe. In March, a really cool shoot was organised between the English, French and German teams. But unfortunately, due to the resurgence of COVID-19 and the accompanying restrictions in the UK, this shoot had to be cancelled at the last minute. An alternative needed to be found, and fast. With movement between Spain and the rest of Europe still allowed, so it made sense for Mark to join us at our new home on the shores of Oriana for a truly wild adventure. Yeah. With next to no planning and the flights booked, we decided we'd make a different kind of film this time. Free from rig talks, tactics and strategy, it was important to convey the values that really mattered to us. The reason why we do it. The reason why we travel thousands of kilometres a year in pursuit of our quarry. Because when it comes to fishing, much more counts. Adventure. Oh, let's go, let's go. Freedom. If wanted to be alive, huh? Wild landscapes and of course, sharing all these experiences with good friends. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah! Oh, but stop. Let's not jump right into the action this time and rewind a bit because this adventure is well worth telling from the very beginning. The journey for Mark began with a flight from Frankfurt, Germany to Madrid and ended with a three hour drive to my home in Extremadura. Before we started fishing, it was time to get the important things out of the way, like having a big social barbecue with friends and travelers we had met from around the lake over the previous months. <laughs>
What's going on then, Mark? Found a couple. Just a few, eh? Handful. <laughs> that would be huge hands, so. though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we spotted a few, haven't we? Just off the rocky uh, banks. Yeah, it, it it looks like totally predator country here. Like, yeah, for sure. It's sand or black bass area, but yeah, it's full like of it carb. Too. It's full of carb, and they're really close into the bank. That said, yeah, it's really deep. Yeah. So it will be interesting. Um, if they drop down at some point and start feeding. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for, isn't it? Yeah, let's see. It's the best thing we could find so far. Everyone Absolutely. is struggling at the lake. Yeah. And to be able to put up camp on literally hundreds of carp <laughs> can't be that bad. Well, I'll see you guys in a bit then, man. Best of luck. Give me a shout and catch a bigger mesh. Wunderschönen guten Morgen und was für ein Morgen das ist hier in Spanien. Ähm, das ist eine atemberaubende und total surreale Landschaft. Ähm, die Extremadura, viel wurde schon darüber berichtet und wahrscheinlich haben andere mehr und Besseres dazu erzählt als ich. Aber ich finde es wirklich ja, atemberaubend und wunder wunderschön. Ähm, heute Morgen ist das erste Mal, dass ich ein bisschen Zeit habe, das Ganze hier auch wirklich aufzusaugen. Wir sind gestern Mittag äh, von Pepe abgeholt worden. Pepe leitet, leitet hier unten einen Guiding Service und hat ein großes Boot mit Motor. Der hat unsere drei Boote dann hier den See rausgezogen. Und ich habe das erste Mal ansatzweise begreifen können, wie riesig dieses Gewässer ist. Der Orellana ist an die 35 Kilometer lang. Ähm, und was das heißt, kann man nur begreifen, wenn man es vor Ort sieht. Es sind Buchten in Buchten, quasi Seen in dem großen See drin verschachtelt und es ist absolut irre. So, um ähm, auf so einer großen Wasserfläche die Fische zu finden, bleibt einem gar nichts anderes über, als seine Augen offen zu halten und ähm, im Idealfall auch technische Hilfsmittel zu benutzen. Und genau das haben wir gestern auch gemacht. Unsere acht Augen haben permanent das Wasser gescannt nach springenden Fischen, denn die Fische verraten sich hier eigentlich sehr, sehr gerne. Wenn sie aber tiefer in den Buchten stehen, dann ja, schafft man es selbst mit einem Motorboot gar nicht, jede einzelne Bucht zu erkunden. So haben wir uns dann teilweise eben unsere Drohne, die wir dabei haben, als Hilfsmittel benutzt und haben die hochgejagt, um jede verheißungsvoll aussehende Bucht nach Fischen zu scannen. Nachdem wir die Fische so auf diese Art und Weise viele Stunden lang vergeblich, muss man sagen, gesucht haben, wir haben einzelne Fische in Buchten gefunden, aber nicht das, wonach wir Ausschau gehalten haben, sind wir dann kurz vor, vor es schon dunkel wurde, also die Sonne war sich am setzten, später Nachmittag haben wir in zwei kleinen Buchten zwei große Schulen von Fischen gefunden. Da diese Buchten aber wirklich sehr klein waren und etwa 300 Meter auseinander liegen, geteilt von einem sehr felsigen Cliff, ähm, haben wir uns entschlossen uns aufzuteilen, um so zum einen weniger Druck auf diese zwei Gruppen Fische auszuüben und ähm, damit auch einfach jeder ein bisschen mehr Platz hat sich zu entfalten. Ja, dieses Aufteilen hat dann gestern eben kurz vorm Dunkelwerden stattgefunden. Wir haben schnell noch die Routen rausgebracht, ähm, auf verschiedene Tiefen verteilt. Die Fische standen über sehr tiefem Wasser, weil wir hatten eben die Hoffnung, dass sobald sich die Sonne setzt, äh, die Fische eben anfangen zu fressen und dann gegebenenfalls auch im Flachwasser zu fressen. Und ähm, damit sind wir dann erstmal gestern in die erste Nacht gegangen. 
I'm not going to lie, we had a really good feeling for the first night. I mean we was on fish and not a small group either. We imagined a night full of screaming R3s and big carp carnage, but it wasn't to be. All our hook baits remained untouched until the next morning. Of course we got up with mixed feelings at first, but shortly after sunrise we got our first bite. But unfortunately, the fish was to fall off not long after. I think the disappointment on Mark's face was very clear for everyone to see. Der Fisch ist leider nach ganz kurzer Zeit, nach zwei, drei Sekunden Kontakt ausgestiegen, was richtig bitter ist, gerade an so einem riesigen See hier. Ähm, aber ich bin guter Hoffnung für den Rest des Tages. Und was noch viel wichtiger und besser ist, Samir hat kurze Zeit, wonach ich den Fisch verloren habe, angerufen und hat den ersten Fisch im Kescher. Morning, guys! What's going on? Yeah, no fish. Mark just lost one. One. Mark did, yeah. Okay. Well, that was a little bit out of the blue. I was literally just chatting with Lolo and Claude, contemplating the pack up and the move. And I uh, hadn't really seen much this morning. And uh, yeah, this one went belting off. Um, I don't think it's particularly big carp. It's putting off a pretty good scrap. And yeah, it was only in a couple of meters of water. So it's an interesting. Uh... Ooh, there it is. <laughs> interesting to discover what depths are prepared to feed at, so let's hopefully get this one in the net. There we go. Come on. Yeah. No, he tried yeah, to come Yeah, he got it. Yay! Woo. First cut. Thank. Yes, Claude. Thanks, buddy. Nice oh, one. one. That's not so bad. No. Oh, oh, that's cool. Good start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good We're start. Ready. Cheers guys, thanks for that. <laughs> the lucky guy. The lucky guy. Born lucky. And there we go. First car for the session. Spent a lot of time searching yesterday. And yeah, we were really starting to think we weren't going to find them. But we literally turned the corner and there was hundreds of carp there. But after getting our rods out, everything went really quiet. And last night I felt like the fish had left the area. But literally, I was just about to pack up. When Laurie and then the Claude come to visit me, and yeah, we was having a little chat, and this puppy went rattling off. Great start to the session. Hopefully a few more to come. Thanks for coming, little buddy. Go you tell your friends where the squid's at. For the first night, I fished two rods in deeper water. The other two really close in. After the first eight come to a rod I'd placed in the margin, I decided to move the other two rods to a similar distance and depth. So here we are at the end of the second day and things are going surprisingly well. Now this morning I woke up to no fish and I was actually contemplating a move when my right hand rod busted off in two and a half meters of water. And yeah, that ended up being a lovely small carp of around 15 kilos, which I was over the moon with. And it was enough to make me hang it out for the rest of the day. Now, to be honest, it was pretty quiet. We didn't see too many shows after that first capture, but as it was, the light was just starting to fade, my left hand rod, which I moved from seven meters depth to three meters busted off and that ended up being a really, really nice one. A quite a long old common with a big fat belly full of spawn, tipping the scales at just over 40 pounds. And as you can imagine, I was pretty chuffed with that. Well, that's the second one for today. And I've got to tell you, I was proper impressed when this one broke the surface. This morning I managed to catch myself a small fish of around 15 kilos. And yeah, just as I was about to pack up and move. So I decided to hang it out and just see what happened throughout the day. And yeah, about half hour ago, this one went absolutely belting off. 
he gave me a hell of a scrap out in the deep water. And yeah, eventually he ended up in my net. It's been a great start to this trip so far. I just hope Mark can catch one next and hopefully a big one before the session's out. Going into tonight, I'm pretty confident to be honest. We've seen a few show while I was doing the pictures and yeah, I'm just hoping we can nab another one throughout the evening. And uh, yeah, if not, then I'm sure we'll be packing up and moving in the morning. Oh no! That didn't go so well, but I didn't really have much time to wallow in my sorrows before another one of my rods was away. Oh, oh, oh. oh I don't think it's a big one. The fight just seems too jagged, too fast. Big fight, really big fight. Normally when they fight this hard, they're not actually that big, but you never, never know. Oh, oh, Christ. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh. Maybe another one around 18 kilos, I think. Whew. Yeah, man. Awesome. Absolutely f***ing awesome. It's crazy. Once again, I was just packing up. <laughs> I was just packing up. Oh, man. This is so madness. Absolute madness. And there we go. The second decent one from this session so far, and a proper Oriana gem. I couldn't believe it actually rattled off as I was just about to pack up once more. And this seems to be becoming a reoccurring theme, to be honest. Maybe I should start packing up more often if I'm getting bites like this every time I do. Unfortunately, Mark round the corner hasn't been able to catch any carp yet, but the main reason why we split up is so that one of us could get on them, and if someone started catching, then the other one would come and join whoever was catching. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. And hopefully Mark's going to be here soon to get in on the action too. Thank you so much for coming, buddy. You've absolutely made my day. Yeah! Can't wait for Mark to get here, get in on the action. Yeah, not so bad, buddy. Been a pretty busy morning, to be honest. Pirates of the Mediterranean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Certainly feels like that today, mate. Right, should we get everything unpacked then and uh, ready for uh, a bit more carnage, hopefully? It's a bit of a mess, but <laughs> hopefully it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, mate, for sure.
Well, it's been a very productive 24 hours here in my swim. Now, when we first found the fish, me and Mark decided that we would both split up as the group was so large to give ourselves the best chance of catching some fish from this area and without scaring them off by dropping too many lines in one spot. So my swim has turned out to be the more productive. So now Mark has headed down to join me and hopefully get in on the action. In the meanwhile, I'm cooking him a gourmet breakfast in the hope of keeping his energy levels up because I'm sure we're going to catch a few carp over the next 24 hours. Wir sind jetzt hier gemoved zu Samir in die Bucht. Ähm, Samir macht mir gerade netterweise ein kleines Frühstück, da wir den ganzen Morgen nur gerödelt haben, alles zusammengepackt, um möglichst schnell hier hinzukommen. Ich bin jetzt gerade ein paar neue Ricks am Binden und dann sehe ich zu, dass ich meine Routen ins Wasser kriege. Das Irre ist, das ist eines der größten Gewässer hier, was ich jemals gesehen habe. Und wir werfen. Wir werfen tatsächlich in Unterarmwurfweite, fischen im Steilhang, aber die Fische sind halt hier. Und ähm, ich sehe jetzt zu, dass ich auch ein oder zwei abgegriffen kriege. Here you go, buddy. Egg lettuce, bacon, tomato <lacht> and cheese. A proper carp life is special, mate. Plenty I of think energy. So. Yeah. <lacht> Massive thank you. That was desperately needed. Yeah, fuel for the road ahead, mate. <lacht> Hopefully we're going to get into a few this afternoon. Hopefully we need that. Yeah. <lacht> Sebastian and the cameraman decided to climb a cliff face behind us to get some awesome elevated shots. He had just begun his ascent when the action started. Typical, hey? Is it running? <laughs> yes, yeah, running, it's running. <laughs> yes, Mr. Beast. <laughs> What's going on, mate? Finally, <laughs> after some, how should we describe it? Um, Shenanigans. Yes. <laughs> I see a mur, no, it's a, it's a common. Oh, it's here already? Yeah, I don't think we need to bow that. Okay, thing. I'm going to get you the net, mate. Do you want to say something in German quickly? Schnell, schnell! <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Right. I think you can just net it, mate. It's there. <laughs> right, I'm going to try and do this one-handed. Okay, he swam under the net. Missed it again. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Are you f***ing joking? Talking about shenanigans. <laughs> oh, yes, mate. Yes, bro. Woo! Yeah, that was so difficult trying to film that at the same time. Oh. Well done, mate. Well done, we did it. Teamwork makes the dream work. Allegedly. <laughs> Can you take that before it jumps up the net? Enough. First Orlana Cup. Took a while, but more than welcome and more than made up for the effort that we put in so far. Yeah, really, really happy. On lakes like this, with this size, what we did is we put it in a sling first so we can get the rods back out because fish usually tend to travel in groups, especially in these gigantic lakes. So there's every chance of getting a quick second bite. That's why we put him in the sling immediately. Got the rack back out, filming this beauty, and now we get him back to his friends to tell him what a good bait is. <laughs> yes, well done, mate. Well done. Come here, mate. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, mate. Teamwork makes the dream work, bro. 
With this fish, Mark was finally off the mark on day three. And you could see how relieved he was that the pressure to catch was finally over. But I tell you what, after such a busy day, we all look forward to getting our heads down for a good night's sleep. Oh yeah! Woo! Oh, let's go! Let's go! Wow! <laughs> How far left is he going? Oh, look at that! It's a beautiful morning to be alive, huh? True, Dan. Oh my gosh! Oh. Feels decent. Oh. I saw something. Oh. Don't know if you saw the hey, same. Take it easy, bro. Take it easy, bro. Oh my god. I'm not fucking around. I'm scooping this fucker when it's ready. Here we go. Oh. He nearly did a dolphin flip, did he? <sighs> yeah, you get up, man. Holy <laughs> Sorry, mate. You ready? Here we go. Not yet. Not yet. We can't scoop it, otherwise it'll look really bad. Oh, <laughs> yeah! Oh, oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, mate. Oh, that's a decent one, that's bro. That's a decent one. Look at the width, bro. It's not so much the depth. Oh, awesome yeah, fish. Give, awesome, awesome fish. Give us a big high five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, we've got an epic video. Woo! <laughs> look at look at him. Just <laughs> mega fish, right? Mega fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So far, it's all been morning bites for us, uh, which I'm really glad for because we're living like the baboons on a rocky island here. <laughs> and to go down to the rocks is dangerous even in daytime. So I'm really glad nothing happens during the night. But once the sun is up, they show up. And this morning, something special happened. I'm gonna show you my big present from Oelana. <laughs> Look at that. It doesn't get much better than that. The landscape, those fish, this lake. I'm absolutely in love with the place. Whoa. <laughs> well done, Mark. You absolutely deserve that, buddy. Uh, mega. Awesome times. Mate, I'm so pleased for you, man. <laughs> so pleased. <laughs> what a mega, mega Oriana carp. Absolutely. Let's get this one back, drink more coffee, and catch more fish. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Perfect. Well, you join us on another glorious morning on the banks of Horodana. This lake truly is something special. And from the first moment I stepped foot on these shores, I was absolutely captivated by the surroundings. And I knew I just had to live here and fish here more. Yesterday, we had a lot of bites between the hours of 10 and 12. So this morning, I'm gonna prepare a lot of rigs, get all my stuff ready, so when bite time does come, 
And if it comes, I'm well prepared. I can get my rods back in the water quickly. Yesterday, getting my rods out quickly gave me quick bites in succession. So I'm hoping for a repeat the same today. But yeah, I couldn't think of a more beautiful place to be fishing right now. And especially in March, the temperatures are in excess of 25 degrees. And yeah, the landscape's just so beautiful. And I feel truly privileged to be angling here at this moment. I'm just taking a little walk around to uh, a ledge where we spotted some carp with a drone on the first day we got here. So basically they were patrolling up and down this rock face that's just around the corner. And uh, I spotted a lovely little ledge uh, about the size of a bivy footprint where it's possible to present a bait and maybe even stalk one out of the edge. Now this terrain is pretty treacherous. As you can see, it's lots of sharp rocks and it's not so cool. But um, yeah, we have to pay attention because one fall, bang your head on some of these sharp bits, your life is over. <laughs> right. Yeah, there it is. I reckon I'll be able to fish that nicely from here. It's just literally just down there. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of mixed particle. I have uh, mixed seeds and uh, maids. Cut the handfuls of that just down there in the edge. Followed by a little bit of squid flake. The trusty squid flake, the ultimate carp attractor. Once again, I'm just going to give a couple of hands down here on that ledge. You can see uh, you can get a fish or two feeding. Perfect. All right, that's all done. All right, let's make our way back. <coughs> With the magical sunrise and that awesome fish, we were off to a flying start, but unfortunately the rest of the day remained quiet. It suddenly felt like there was not a single fish out in front of us, and with that, it made our final decision to move much easier. Just to be clear, when I say moving, we're not talking about a change of one swim from one side of the lake to the other. We had one and a half hours of travel in front of us to get to the area we fancied. And that does not include time invested to look for fish while en route to our destination. Setting up camp somewhere where it just looks nice wasn't an option for us. Mark said it the best at the beginning of the video, 
This lake is something very special. Its landscape is constantly changing. Just this morning we left a swim that had a slight African vibe to it, with the trees and the rocky landscape. And now just take a look. Doesn't it look a bit like the Scottish Highlands? Really, this lake is truly something else, and I don't think I'll ever get bored here. So here we are at the end of another very busy day. And after Mark's big capture yesterday, we failed to get any more bites. And with no action this morning, it was time to pack up and get on the move. Like I said before, angling on this lake doesn't lend itself to camping in the same spot. You have to be proactive and get out there and try and find the carp to get the bites. Now today we spent a lot of time searching on the water, but the lake's very busy due to it being Easter. And with a lot of chop on the water, it's made it very difficult to spot carp. We've ended up in a really beautiful bay with lots and lots of different features and a big plateau out in front of us. And we did see a few fish on the echo sounder. So I'm sort of confident for the night ahead, but we haven't seen any show for the last couple of hours, which doesn't really blend well to me. If we don't catch any carp tonight, we're gonna to pack up first thing in the morning and get on the search again, as I'm sure there's fish out there and a bite to be had. It's such a beautiful spot and I will be sad to leave this area, but like I said, catching carp is the aim of this trip and we're out there to get the big ones. Last minute here uh, in this beautiful area that we um, found yesterday. In theory, it's one of the best fishing spots I've ever seen. Uh, you can fish to multiple different uh, structures and um, it, you can fish so versatile. You could spread probably like 15 rods here, but if the fish ain't there, there's just no point staying. So what we do is, yeah, as you can already see, the boats are packed. Um, and we will head off in search for carp. Uh, yesterday we didn't quite find them, but I think by now it's better to spend the whole day searching than a whole day's camping, because you have to come to them, they won't come to you. So yeah, that's what we do. We get packed up, head down the lake and um, search some carp. Hopefully we'll find them. better to spend the whole day searching than a whole day's camping because you have to come to them, they won't come to you, hopefully we'll find them. And it was definitely worth it.
The area we ended up in was also the first one that was accessible by car, and so Claire decided to join us for a visit. After we had placed our rods, Claire cracked out a great meal, something that had been very much lacking over the last few days. <laughs> Whee! Yay! Mark? Thank you. <laughs> Shouldn't we tilt the glass slightly? Salut, Sante. Salut. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow, Claire. We spent a very relaxed afternoon, chilling, chatting away and enjoying our time on the bank. But unfortunately, the rods remained silent, even though there are fish showing everywhere. Something just didn't add up right with me. I hate being on fish with no action. So I decided to replace some of my rods to make sure I was leaving nothing to chance. All over the sudden, Mark had a bite. At least that's what we thought. It turned out to be two guys fishing for black bass who caught his line. And if that wasn't enough, they stole his marker from his spot. Needless to say, he wasn't too pleased at all. He loves you, doesn't he, Mark? <laughs> you like him, he's a dog man. They're not even casting my line before they pinched the marker. What? They, they nicked the marker. No! Yeah. It took quite some time until I was finally happy with my rods. The last one was placed in the very last light of day. That night we witnessed a spectacular sunset. Looking to the right from our swim, the sun disappeared over the hills and the colours surrounding it were breathtaking. To our left, however, there was a huge storm creeping in slowly towards us. It didn't take long until it unfolded in all its force and kept us awake for quite some time. Over the years I've been lucky enough to fish some truly epic waters across Europe, but every now and then you come across a lake that truly captivates your soul, and Orellana is certainly one of those. For me this could possibly be the last frontier of big carp fishing in Europe, one of the places where it still feels wild and untouched, a truly magnificent lake stretching out over 37 kilometres with wild and varying terrains that really, really, really captivate my imagination. For sure there's places in Europe where you could catch bigger carp, and a lot easier too. But there's something about the untouched, this wild frontier of carp fishing, that you just can't beat. <laughs> well, it's been a tough few days in Orellana. We spent a lot of time searching here, and to be honest, without any fantastic results. But last night there was an absolutely epic storm that rattled on until the early hours of the morning. And yeah, it wasn't even an hour after it finished. Both of our rods were away. Yeah, mit den zwei kleinen fing unser Morgen an, weil gerade als ich hier in meinen zweiten am Drillen war, konnte ich schon den ersten Silberstreifen am Horizont sehen. Jetzt gerade kriecht die Sonne über die Berge. Und für uns heißt das, die zwei hier dürfen ihren Wege gehen. Und wir machen uns erstmal einen leckeren Kaffee. Lovely times. <laughs> well, what could I say? There were literally hundreds of fish directly out in front of us, but sadly the alarms remained silent for the rest of the day. With more carp out in front of us like we'd ever witnessed before, 
we all expected to catch a few fish pretty quick. But the longer we had to look at what was happening out in front of us, the clearer it became. The fish were potentially about to spawn. Now this might sound a bit strange since the fish in the UK spawn between May and June, but when you consider that the temperatures were constantly around 23 to 25 degrees, it makes this scenario sound a lot more realistic. Even trying to stalk one using bread and corn failed, since the fish showed absolutely no interest at all. That evening we experienced another beautiful sunset and the rods were placed one last time. During all my years of carp fishing, I've seen a couple of places, um, fished a couple of lakes all across Europe to Africa, and now I'm here. And this to me really is something special, I guess. Not just the landscape, which you can hardly describe if you haven't seen it, the expanse of this water is unbelievable. It's lakes within lakes. and. It is base within base and you will hardly, you can spend a lifetime fishing here and you will never discover everything, not even touch it actually. But it is as pure and as raw as it gets and it's not just carp fishing. If you get a feel for the place, I think it brings out the hunter in you. You go back to instinct hunting and I think that is the best thing that can happen to you if you really like fishing. So to me, it's not even a question. I have to be back. For me, I love this lake so much. After fishing my first session here, I actually decided to move up to the lake and rent a house on the waterfront. And this is gonna be home for the next five years. Now in that time, I doubt very much we're even gonna scratch the surface of the angling that's on offer here. But I could promise you this, I'm gonna enjoy myself trying my absolute hardest. I've really had a fantastic time, man. It's been great, really. Honestly, we haven't stopped laughing this week, man. We haven't stopped laughing this week. It's been absolutely funny, man. Sebastian, that's smooth. He doesn't moan with some anglers, but when I see something, he's like, I've had such a good time. I've had such a good time. My face hurts. You know, when I come to fish, I've been laughing that much, my face hurts. It's like, Sebastian, that's smooth. He doesn't moan with some anglers, but when I see something, he's like, I've had such a good time. I've had such a good time. My face hurts. You know, when I come to fish, I've been laughing that much, my face hurts. It's like, Oh, I want to stay right here, right here. Chilling with my friends for another year. I would walk away from the spotlight for the good life. Apologetic text, he says to come over Well, the whole damn town has been waiting for the day When you would come back here There was dancing and talking and steaks on the grill And I think that I will be alright 
And my ex from high school still looks just the same as she did back in 2009. Not gonna wait till the morning. Let's never put the night. Oh. Get the 600! The 600! Oh, okay, get the drone as well! <laughs> schnell, schnell! <laughs> Up is the aim of this trip, and we're out there to get the big ones. Yeah, we did it! Is that cool? Is that all right for you? It was all right, yeah, it was awesome. It was all right? Yeah. One more time or not? No, uh, I liked it. You sure? Yeah. Is that okay, Mark? Sounded really good. Get, we're done. Yeah. There you go. <sighs> sein oder nicht sein? Das ist hier die Frage. <laughs> Hamlet. Huh? Yeah. To be or not to be? <laughs> we should tie it to the front of the boat. <laughs> Pirates are coming. Pirates of Orlando. Taking over your swim. <laughs> you know I made Zilla hold a carp like I was holding it then? He hated it. I refused to do a wide angle and him let it hold it on his knees. He's like, no, you can't do this. All my friends will say I'm catching small fish. It has to be Grober Keller. <laughs> I was like, even photos of Grober, everything Grober Keller. Sorry, do you need me out this shot quickly? No, just stay in there, but don't say anything. Just shut the up. Shut the up. <laughs> we've searched this lake relentlessly to, with, to be on. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. no. I got it. I got it. I've got him, but I'm wet. <laughs> Should we just keep it like that? <laughs> Stop. Okay, in again. Sorry, one moment, mate, please. <laughs> I can't stop laughing, mate. Why am I laughing? You're not even here. Okay, 